Hello, I'm Guinness the Mirror. So I reached out to another friend of mine. I said, look, you know, I need to go on vacation somewhere. Where should I go? He said, go to Africa. And not only am I going to go, I'm going to explore a new country. So I went to Tanzania, South Africa, Namibia, Mali, Senegal, Morocco, Liberia, Namibia, Kenya, the Voodoo Festival in Wida. Gambia, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire. Sierra Leone, Ghana, Nigeria. It's been, it's been a beautiful, experience is learning more about our culture, our indigenous culture. So who it means freedom in Swahili. I'm in search of my roots. In finding that, I would experience my Uhuru, which is freedom. Peace, family. Oh, hold on. Let me adjust my camera. Let me adjust. There we go. Peace, family. We are live again. Dynasty Mirror Search for Who. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, do me a favor. Hit that like button as you guys come into the chat room. Again, that is your guys's, that is you all's price of a mission. You have to hit the like button as you come to the chat room. Also, make sure you share and make sure you subscribe. We are going to jump right into it. We have a couple. We have two special guests on with us today. Brother Sub-03639 and Brother Sean S. Both Tuskegee men. And we're going to be discussing the opportunities, the great opportunities uh, with IT. Sub-Zero has been on here uh, several times. And, you know, he's going to share his story uh, with you all. Also go into details in regards to his IT course that he offers. And Brother Sean S. is going to add to the conversation as well. So, Sub, go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone who might. Hey, hey, man. Glad to be back. Glad to be here. Uh, I enjoy coming on this platform every time. Um, really, you know, uh, last time I was here, I was, you know, we were talking about the class, the data analytics class we started. But at any rate, uh, we have a new class we're about to start. Um, uh, and if, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Sub Zero Three Six Three Nine. I run Lifting the Bell IT Academy. Uh, been doing it for about five years now. Um, and we're expanding. Uh, this brother gentleman I'm about to introduce is actually pretty, pretty sharp in uh, gentleman I've been working with for a while now and uh, on other things too. So, um, first let me just say thank you for having me on the channel, Dinas. And uh, I guess I want to start by saying, hey, we started lifting the veil back to uh, 2016, seven, no, 2017, 18, somewhere in there. Um, so we're over five, pushing six years. And we've put, you know, we placed, I don't, I don't even, I've lost track. I know we're north of $6 million in annual realized salaries for my students. Um, we, you know, I specialize in teaching skill sets that are, high earning we don't want to teach a skill set that's not that you know high up as far as the income piece of it so we've been doing this for a while now and i have a juggernaut with me a brother that i have been um singing his praises all over the the youtube space this brother is a guru in the industry of salesforce he's a a, a basically a brand now i would say that i think he has uh 
I forget. I'm gonna let him tell you the title that he has. He's been on panels. He speaks for Salesforce, and he can really educate you on Salesforce. And this is our second class with Salesforce with him. And I want him to really kind of, you know, I guess come in and talk about first of all why we're doing Salesforce, how much it pays, and stuff like that. So um, first, I'm gonna say he went to Tuskegee with me. Uh, met him way back about 25 years ago. Dating myself. Um, <laughs> dating both of us, right? Anyway, um, yeah, man, we 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 did ministry together in campus. We yeah, we look, man, we been knowing this brother. He moved to my hometown. We were in Montgomery for a while, and he got into IT probably about I don't know about five six years before I did. I was still doing real estate at the time, and he got into IT as a recruiter. And so you that's what I guess makes him really an authority. And you're going to see when he starts talking what I'm talking about. He, he's really knowledgeable. He's an authority on all different types of facets of skill sets uh, and what pays and what doesn't. So he can kind of steer you in the right direction. Uh, he just told me today he'd be willing to do some consults. So I'm like, hey, good. <laughs> I, I talk all day, every day. So, I'm like, OK, if anybody want to reach out to me, I'm going to give you all the phone number if you want to talk to me and. Uh, talk to him or whoever man and just but anyway let me go back to him he's very knowledgeable been doing this for a while uh then about five years ago he made a shift into salesforce and with his skill set and the way he is he quickly rose to rose the rose the ranks of it uh he's well known been all over in london all over the world speaking and giving uh events for salesforce so this brother's a very he's an industry i would call him an industry leader in this space so i'm gonna reintroduce the psalm and introduce to others sean sorrells what's up brother what's going on man i appreciate that i'm always humbled every time i hear you introduce me man i'm like goodness gracious brother now to make brother feel good so anyway my name is sean sorrells it's good to good to be here appreciate you prince Diamond. hey, hey, hey sean i was gonna say there's like some feedback in the background there feedback? how about that I don't know. Is it like you got like a bird or an animal? Like some okay. type of. Let's see here. It's like I hear is a dog better? or an animal or. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we'll, we'll work more. Go ahead. All right. How's that? We'll, we'll go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Anyway, Sean Sorrells. Um, I live here in Atlanta with my my beautiful wife uh, of twenty one years raising our three children to a, which just went to college and one is in high school. And um, as uh, as Sub said, I am um, a global, you know, senior global Salesforce leader and instructor um, where I manage teams all around the globe uh, as it relates to Salesforce. And uh, but my passion is teaching people how to get high earning jobs in the sphere of Salesforce. I have an absolute passion for seeing People reach their goals, goals that they didn't even think were attainable, uh, reach income levels that they didn't think was attainable uh, in very, very short periods of time uh, using this platform called Salesforce. And so that's a passion of mine. I love working with Sub in terms of uh, teaching his courses and uh, for his school and uh, honored to be here tonight. All right, go ahead, Sub. What's up, you there? Sorry about that. Yeah. So um, the reason we're doing this course, first of all, I actually, Sean, I didn't know what Salesforce was. I'll tell you, Sean, when he was a recruiter, started talking to me about Salesforce. He's like, man, you might want to check this out. This is the, this thing is pretty hot. Um, they have this conference called Dreamforce. They bring in a bunch of big mega stars and they just completely take over San Francisco on a weekend or something for a week or four days or so. Uh, and I got into it, and I was really impressed with it. And this is why I'm going to say this. First of all, my story is I actually, when I first got into IT, I was trying to get into IT. Sean was a recruiter, like I said. I used to call Sean at least once or twice a week, like, man, I'm trying to get down. What do I need to do? And different things like that, right? And so what happened was he was just telling me, like, you know, you, you need to try to find a way to get experience, a, a way to really prove yourself, prove your skills. Well, we I didn't, you know, Salesforce was out. I didn't know anything about it. And so I had to go and pay a company like $14,000 and 
go through all types of drama just to get my first job. It took me two years, two painful years to try to get into IT. Uh, struggling, and I was making $30,000 as a produce manager. So I really was depressed, right? That being said, I wound up being able to get myself, uh, you know, educated enough where I could actually hold my own in these interviews and was able to get a job uh, eventually. Fast forward, you know, like I say, Sean goes into Salesforce. And then when I see Salesforce, and I mean, he's going to go into it, but they, I just, what I was really impressed with was the ability for a person who has no experience at all to learn a skill set and prove themselves where employers can go. And they all have a, I guess, conduit through which they use that is that is the called trailhead that they're able to go in and say, okay, you have X amount of badges. You have X amount of points. You've already accomplished this. You know how to do this. You earn this badge. This is exactly what our job entails is you knowing this skill set. So that's good. So let's give this person a call. And I've seen this firsthand with my barber who cut my hair. Because when Sean was talking to me, I, my barber saw me scrolling on my phone and now he making six figures. He was cutting hair. High school diploma, no bachelor's degree. Bro's doing real well for himself. All he did was just say, man, what's that? And then led him down a, a, a journey. And that's what we're here today to talk about. Yep. <clears throat> that's right. So, you know, am I still feeding back? I just want to be clear first and make sure I'm I'm not feeding back here. I think it's something in your background, but if it is, if it is, right. man, I don't, I don't yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's like there's something in your background, like somebody's in the kitchen with, I, yeah. I don't know, like something's going on in the background. But I like know what it is. Up now. I have, I have some birds. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so I, I said birds originally. I said it. I think it's the birds. Right, it's the birds. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm having them taken care of. Sorry about that. All right. Yeah. So the, the, the bottom line is, right, when it comes to, you know, why we're here, you know, we have a class that's starting on Monday, February 20th. This Monday, we'll be doing orientation where we're teaching Salesforce. So we'll be, it's an opportunity for people to learn a skill set, a high value skill set, a skill set that's highly in demand, that's sought after by thousands of companies all over the globe. We're teaching that skill set starting this Monday at 9 p.m. And so really looking forward to having people in the class, having people join uh, and take their skills and their learning to the next level so that they can take their income to the next level. And this is not just an, an academic class where it's like you get a bunch of material and you go home and you study it by yourself. This is a class where we are digging in together. We are, it's me, we are live, it's, a, it's talking, we're going through material um, and we're making sure you have an understanding of what we're going through um, so that you can actually get certified and actually get a job. Now, so I've talked about, my background, my background is in software development, then tech sales and sales leadership, and then ultimately Salesforce leadership in global sales operations. And so what that means, though, is that I get to leverage all that I know about recruiting after having started up two recruiting firms and grew them successfully. I get to leverage that whole background to your benefit. Right. So if you were to join the class. Um, not only are you going to get a high value skill set, right, where you're learning a skill set that is highly in demand, but you're also going to learn the, the tricks of the trade to how to get a job. The skill set of obtaining a high value job, that is also a skill. It's not luck. It's not chance. It's not any of that kind of stuff. People that get high earning jobs get them because they know the skill of what it takes to get a high earning job. And so you'll learn that. You'll learn, we revamp your resume, we revamp your LinkedIn profile, right? We give you interviewing tips and things, but this is not some, you know, Google information. This is information from um, a recruiter, a recruiter who led recruiters for, for over a decade. And so this is behind the scenes information. And so it's a lot of value packed into 90 days. That's how long the class is, right? We're doing this for three months together three times a week together and we knock it out and it's a lot of fun we have a lot of fun doing it and um and it's a, even more fun as people get their certifications and get their jobs i 
I guess Don is gone right now. No, 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 no. I'm here. I'm just I'm listening. Oh. I mean, this is this for you guys. Um yeah. So let, let me say this, man. Um I I actually was talking to somebody today about the class and they were asking questions and things like that. Um one of the main things I want you guys hope I just put my number in there. I hope you guys can see the phone number. If not, Don is if you get a chance, could you put that phone number I put in the back? Because it's not showing in the chat. Okay, right I do right now. Yeah. But um, but yeah, let me say this, man. I, I went and uh I guess yeah, you know, I was doing a consultation with someone today, and they were just asking all these questions, saying, Man, I drive trucks, I just don't know if I'm gonna be really a good fit. And look, man, just about probably if I had to put it in the percentage, man, we probably talk about maybe 10% of the students I talk to drive trucks. Uh, a lot, I've run into a lot of school teachers, a lot of nurses, a lot of uh, people that work in factories. I get a lot of factory people. Um, you know, people that are in this space for entertainment a lot of times because a lot of the people, when they do call me for a consultation, they say stuff like, yeah, I was just looking at it for a consultation I mean, looking at it, and I just decided. Like, I had two people today. Man, I've been seeing you around. I just never thought I'd give it a shot. But, you know, this brother, Sean, he said some things I like. Had a couple of people tell me that today. So we're definitely uh, moving in that direction. And I want—I really want, Sean, if you get a chance to try to talk about how uh, you can come in with, like, I guess no experience. Like, if somebody were to ask you, okay, do I have to actually know how to – read 10,000 lines of code. You know, we used to get it in hell in them C++ sure. programs we used to write, man. It was yeah. it was hell, you know, but when we was in school. But that's what I'm saying. So if somebody is thinking, hey, man, I don't want to get into coding because I know it's going to be a bunch of lines of code and I, I'm not a geeky guy that wants to sit in his cubicle all day and I want to, you know, I might want to go work off a beach or something. Or I don't want to be in a in a job office setting. I'm not cut out for corporate lifestyle what would you what would you tell those people yeah well one of the main reasons i like teaching uh salesforce is because it's what what i would consider a very low um barrier to entry to get into salesforce to get into the tech community so a lot of tech jobs and we we push tech and it and money 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 all that kind of stuff but they don't realize that a lot of these jobs are very um low level high level coding right you got to learn a computer language first and then you got to learn how to like solve problems with those computer languages and even before all that you got to even be interested in that kind of stuff and the reality is not everybody it takes a special mind really to be interested in all of that kind of low level uh kind of thinking and um and coding and and problem solving in that kind of way not everybody's like that. Some people are people people, right? And they love to interact with people and do and, and do things like that. And they're not thinking about ones and zeros and bits and bytes and right, all that kind of stuff. The thing about Salesforce is you don't have to learn some deep level of technical skills. I call it low low tech, right? Because there's no need to have to learn deep technical skills to still be in the tech industry. And that's what I like about Salesforce. So we've taken, uh, you heard Sub say it, you've, we've taken people from, from uh, the retail jobs in the mall that are now making uh, six figures. Uh, we've taken people who, truck drivers, real estate agents, had a lot of real estate agents last class, a lot of um, uh, teachers, educators, right? And these are all people who are no clue about tech. And then 90 days later, they are getting certified. 90 days later, they have this high-end skill set that they would have never imagined that they could have that companies pay a lot of money for. And so that's the thing. If you're thinking, well, I'm not really into tech and I don't read tech books and magazines, neither do I, right? That's not my thing. I don't, I don't enjoy the technology of it all. I'm a tech guy. I love technology, but I don't, I'm not that deep into it. And you don't have to be. And that's the thing I, I love about Salesforce. The other thing about it is when you get into the class, one, one thing that's different about the Salesforce platform is that you don't have to go out and spend a ton of money on acquiring the actual tool, the software called Salesforce. You don't have to spend that money because they give it to you for free. They want you to learn their tool. Why do they want you to learn 
uh, their tool for free is because there are tons of companies that need people who know how to do the work, how to do the skill, uh, who have the skill set. So they empower you guys to learn the, the software at no charge to their company or no charge to you from their company so that you can acquire this skill set that will help their customers still run their business. So that's a tremendous opportunity. And so that's another reason why I love teaching Salesforce is because you have everything you need at your fingertips. When we get started in this class, we won't have to be buying software and installing it and making sure it's running right. You pull up a Chrome browser, right? Your internet browser that you browse the internet with, you go to a website and we're rocking and rolling. That's how we're learning. That's how we're doing our work. That's how the work of Salesforce is done. So it's a huge advantage from that standpoint. It doesn't take people who are great technologists and know all that. If you are have a goal to make a lot more money and get into a stable industry where you can grow and uh, and continue to learn and have a career and make really good substantive money, this is the path to do it. It's one of the easiest paths to do it. And um, and so that's that's what I would say in terms of encouraging those of you who don't know, you know, tech or, hey, I've never done tech. I don't know anything about tech. If you're working a computer and you can browse the Internet, come rock with us. We'll, we'll help you out and we'll get you to where you need to be. Right, let me uh, read let me, one, one second. Let me read this uh, question real quick, this comment. What would you tell someone trying to get into programming but realizes the power of AI like chat GPT coding jobs will go away, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm always it's always interesting. Right. Um, it's a good question. Right. So it's a good question. So please understand my my answer in, um, you know, uh, it, with the degree of humility that, that I'm going to have to answer it. Um I'm always shocked at people who want to get talk about kind of the extreme end of it all. Chat GPT is here, right? AI is here, but AI has been here for years. Salesforce leverages AI. We use an AI called uh, Einstein. We've been using it for businesses for years now, right? So the consumer market is catching up in terms of some of the things that consumers are now able to do, but we've been doing AI for, for years now. And so in uh, leveraging those platforms, the reality is, yes, sometime in the future, will AI be able to do most of our coding? Yes. Actually, even now we use some AI to do some chunks of standardized coding so you, you don't have to write that stuff. But what it won't do, it, it doesn't replace the human. It makes the human more efficient. OK, now. Uh, so, yes. So I leverage AI every day at my job. Um, my team's level leverage AI, I expect them to because at the end of the day, they're able to do more with less, right? All of all of the people that I support, they leverage AI. But is it going to be eliminating high level jobs uh, the way and as quickly as we're thinking? It won't. OK, and I, I, I'm here to say it. it will change the landscape. And this is why I, the, the encouragement would be to you is to get on board. If you think AI is going to be disruptive to tech jobs, imagine what it's going to be doing to non-tech jobs. For example, copywriters, the people who write the copy for websites and, and blog posts and things like that. I, I churned out three blog posts the other day in a matter of 10 minutes. How? Chat GPT, right? So all the people who are using, whose job is to write blog posts. They, they need to be concerned. They need to get into the tech industry and learn how to leverage this tech for their benefit rather than being, you know, afraid that it's going to take their jobs. So that's how I would answer that question. I hope I, I hope I, I've answered it well. Uh, another question real quick and then uh, yeah. I'll pass this up, Zero. Uh, someone's saying, but Salesforce is laying off everybody. Explain the layoffs. Yeah, absolutely. So this is where some people get confused. They, they, they hear Salesforce in the news. And they think that what we're talking about is an opportunity to go work for Salesforce. That's not the case. So Salesforce is the company that makes the software, right? They make the software called Salesforce. That software is used and relied upon by thousands upon thousands of companies worldwide. So because Salesforce, the company, is laying off people, doesn't have any impact on 
all those thousands of companies that use their product and need people who have the skill set to keep their companies running and their customers. Uh, so is it you need to make that distinction? Salesforce, yes, they're laying off. And I know a lot of people at Salesforce, whether they were they have been over, they have armies of salespeople that sell their software. That's how they become so successful and so pervasive in the industry. They have literally armies. And so, yeah, now they're scaling back. They have to scale back. The economy's doing some things. They're scaling back as a company, Salesforce is. But as an industry where, again, we have thousands upon thousands of companies that use the software called Salesforce, the layoffs at Salesforce has no, you, know, you can go online right now and just do a search for Salesforce jobs and your mind will be blown as to how many companies are looking for Salesforce people. I was interviewing people today because I'm looking for Salesforce people for my team, right? So there is, uh, the opportunities are there and are endless. So don't confuse Salesforce, the company, which is just one company. And we're not talking about going to work for that one company. We're talking about learning a skill set that will enable you to work at any company that has Salesforce. And oh, by the way, most companies do. And, it, right, and ahead, me, you know, I wanted to add too. Um, I, I somebody asked me that just about a lot of people call and schedule a consultation. And, you know, in me and I'll definitely pass your number on to Sean. If you want to get a consultation, we can answer a lot of your questions offline. But also, let me say this. I've been developing for about 12, 13 years. And I'm going to tell you just like this. I've worked at what? Uh, Delta. I've worked at uh, you know, just a myriad of companies, Home Depot. Uh, you know, and I've worked for a lot of companies that when you think of these companies, when you think of Delta, the first, the last thing you think of is tech. You think of travel. When you think of Home Depot, you think of a store down the street that sells home supplies. You don't think they have tech, right? And so when you get these skills, these skills will apply to like, and Sean is very, he's very good at knowing this because he did a security, I mean, security, he was a recruiter for over a decade. He'll tell you just in the Atlanta market alone, Porsche, uh, Arby's called me. I remember uh, Arby's was trying to get me on a job one time. Macy's, um, Hooters. Hooters called me one time and was like, look, um, you know, the job is going to pay this. They'll also give you, you know, uh, what was it, like a stipend every day where you can go and eat. Like, you know, I think it was, which was cool because I would make, I would leverage that and spend and save money, you know. But I was just thinking like, man, you know, that's a cool thing. But when you think of Hooters, the last thing you think of is tech, right? So when people say tech companies, that is actually just a small swath of the tech universe, if you will. Because it's that's right. It's like like for example, in in I'm just making up. There's a company I know in Selma called Bush Hog, right? They make like little lawnmowers and stuff or, or riding lawnmowers. They got they have data. Somebody has to track that data. Somebody and and this is just I'm talking about what I do, but specifically even with Salesforce, they have customer relations. They have customers. Every company that has customers needs to manage that relationship. When you go to Best Buy, for example, you have a keychain. That keychain has a barcode. That barcode has certain information about you. They track that information so that they can know what to send you in an email. So that they'll know, oh, you bought this, you bought this thing, it needs batteries. We're gonna send you some ads on batteries. That's intelligence. And that's just how we leverage that all within that's that's customer relationship management. So that's how it works. And that's at every company you see, even small mom and pop companies. I can name companies nobody's ever heard of. Sean, Sean's company sent me to a company over in Midtown, four employees, but they were paying pretty well. You see what I'm saying? So it's, you'd be surprised. It's, it's a very large uh, universe, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I was just looking at the, um, I mean, one way to think about it is if you see a building, they have technology in it and they have someone that, who's in charge of that technology. And that's that's just a very low level way of thinking about it. But it's just to show you it's not we're not just talking about the Googles and the Salesforce and the, you know, all these, you know, main name, main names that we know about on the Internet. I mean, there are companies right in your backyard, in your neighborhood, all of them run off of technology. So it's a couple of good. I see in the in the comments a couple of good questions. There was uh what exactly does the software do? Great question, right? Maybe we should answer that. So Salesforce, right? 
again, differentiating the company, right? Salesforce is a company, but the software they create is best known as a CRM system, right? A customer relationship management system, okay? So what that means is when a company has a, a product or a service that they hey, sell- Sean, if I get a jet real quick. So when I was at CentOS, uh, we used Microsoft Dynamics. So I guess we sure guys is a competitor. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, there are all types of companies um, that have uh, CRM software, right? And so at the end of the day, Salesforce has kind of become the, not kind of, they have become the industry leader in CRM software. And so companies need to be able to manage their customers. They need to be able to know who's bought from them, uh, meet their needs after they bought, right? So customer service, right? Uh, all the things that, that it takes that are related to a customer and all of that needs software to be managed, right? We can't remember it all in our minds, right? You can have thousands of customers. Some companies have tens of thousands of customers and, and even a million customers. And so um, as you think about it, all of those customer interactions need to be tracked in a system so that the company knows how to best serve those customers. That is called a CRM system. Now, that's at its base level, at its core. Now, Salesforce has gotten so big and so um, you know, just huge that once you understand the basics of the CRM system, you can go into other domains and still be within Salesforce. So there are, if you have customer service experience, you can learn the, the Salesforce uh, skill set and then leverage your customer service experience to be on what's called service cloud. If you've been working in the medical industry or you have some kind of experience there, you can leverage that experience to work in medical cloud or health, health cloud. Um, so there are all sorts of clouds, they call it, right, which are different domains that you can go into, the nonprofit cloud, you, the finance cloud, all these different clouds within the sphere of Salesforce that allow you to leverage whatever experience you, you come from. Now, the other question is, are we selling certifications? We don't sell certifications at all. What we're, what we're giving you an opportunity to do is sign up and enjoy and purchase a class led by myself um, to teach you Salesforce. At the end of those 90 days, actually a little bit before the, those 90 days, um, you will take a certification test administered by Salesforce themselves. It's the Salesforce certified administrator exam. And you will also be qualified to take the Salesforce associate certification. So two certifications you'll be able to walk out of this class with, okay? And the skill set and your resume revamped and your LinkedIn revamped the whole nine yards. So um, that is that is what's um, what's going on there. Yeah, and I, I just was sharing my uh, LinkedIn. I mean, I, I'm sorry, my um, trailhead. I hadn't logged in in a long time. I used to be certified, uh, but I have 26,000 points. Um, I, you know, this is something that if I didn't have any experience, all of you guys out there, me and Sean, we were doing this. We were kind of going back to back, trying to one-up each other when I first got in. I'm sure he done ran circles around me now. But <laughs> when I first got in, I remember we did this in like two months, three months. We were at like 26, 27, 30,000 points. Um, and we were just racking up badges and points. This is like a game almost. And when you, when you, when you have an employer – that pays, and let me, for example, if I go, if I go on Indeed real quick, if I go on in, Indeed.com, and I just say Salesforce, I already know what it's going to pay, and I probably should go to uh, Mason Frank as well. But anyway, we'll just hit search right here real quick. I'm just going to just do only remote, because that's another thing I'm sure most people want to know. So anyway, this is the low end. That's that's a pretty probably that's a starter job. They're thirty five dollars an hour. Um, Salesforce administrator, uh, $40, $40, $55, you know, with the experience. Um, so you can, you know, as you see, you can make some, some substantial salaries with it. Um, we don't, and like I said, I, we don't want to teach a skill set that's going to pay $15, $20. That's, that's not what we're here to do. Right. <laughs> we're trying to get to the bag. Right. So that's the main thing. I want you guys to just be aware that you can go and prove yourself. 
You're like, well, I don't have no experience. And yeah, I took a training, but so what if I take a certification test? I ain't going to be able to prove myself. They're going to be, okay, yeah, you got the certification, but you don't have any experience. That's what Trailhead, this is unlike any other technology I've seen. Now, I, I maybe something that I don't know about, but I haven't seen anywhere where you can go and prove yourself. When I had my SQL Server understanding of SQL Server and was learning SSIS and integration, ETL and all that, I didn't have a way to prove myself. I mean, I did. I probably could have went somewhere and built some stuff and posted it on a website and, hey, go to this website and something like that. But this is a, a, a what they call a sandbox that they've already built for you. Now, if you know, if you go over to Indeed and you click over here and you say, okay, we need you to know this, 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 and this. Well, guess what? You can come here. You can say, okay, well, let me go get those badges. Some of they even have some that are high end badges called super badges, which, you know, is 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 it's the worst work to get it. But when you validate, it validates did you complete it, and if not, it'll tell you, hey, you didn't finish. So you have to go back and finish it. But once you get these super badges, it puts you in a special category to employers. You're gonna stand out. That's right. Yep. So, so this is again, as Sub is talking about, that's the platform we're talking about. So, if you're worried about, hey, well, I don't have experience, and and if I get the certification, I still won't have experience. The reality is, you will be building on your experience over these next ninety days in a way that's not just you know theoretical or in the clouds. It's actual. You will literally be in the tool doing projects in the Salesforce software. So at the end of the day, and your progress is tracked and you've, you have badges to, to verify and certify that you can do the skill set. So at the end of the day, it's, that's why I teach this. Um, um, uh, you know, I know other technologies, but this is the one I favor because, again, in terms of people getting into tech, right, you don't have to be a genius. You don't have to be in love with ones and zeros and coding and all that kind of stuff. We don't code. I don't code. And just to talk, I mean, Sub is showing you some jobs here, but just to talk, you know, it's all, it depends on the market, right? My first Salesforce job, I was making 130K annually, okay? Um, within five years of that, I was more than double that, okay? So, and, and this is not uncommon. I have people in my own personal network. I have one sister who's making a little bit over 600 grand a year doing Salesforce. Okay. These are not exaggerations. This is real deal. Holy field. And in the class, I bring some of these people in to talk, to keep you encouraged, to keep you motivated along the line, not promising you that at the end of the 90 days, you're going to be making 600 grand or even 150 grand or any of that. But at the, the point is that we're going to help you stay motivated to meet your goal of completing the class learning the skill set, getting your certification, and then getting your first job. That's the exciting part. So that is, um, so that's where we are. So the class, again, for those of you who may not have, have heard before, starts on Monday. It begins uh, at nine o'clock on Monday, this Monday, February uh, the 20th. We go every week for the next 90 days. We go every week on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern live. Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern live and then Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern. OK, so my West Coast folks can get it in um, our last class. We had people all over the country and nine o'clock seemed to work well for everybody. Uh, Eastern, nine Eastern. And so that's what we'll be doing again. Nine, nine on Tuesday nights, nine on Thursday nights, nine a.m. on Saturdays. We call it Salesforce Saturdays. We get in. We, uh, we have a good time Saturday mornings. We get in and out. And uh, each class is about an hour and a half, right? Just an hour and a half. It is very interactive, right? We're not, you're not in the chat unless I ask you to do something in the chat. If you have a question, you unmute your microphone, you ask your question. And guess who's answering? I am. I'm answering the question, right? So it is, it is a real, true class with a real live instructor who's invested in helping you get uh to your goals get to the next level and get this this high value skill set let me let me add one more thing um uh dinas could you put the link in there i'm sorry brother i didn't even give you the link people are asking for the link so right. I put the in the private chat yes yeah, in I the private it. chat yeah i got you. um 
also, guys, I, I, I guess I we never really. Why are, I'm, I'm gonna ask Sean this question myself. Sean, what is what are your credentials in Salesforce? Because I guess that's that's something I kind of touched on, and we kind of yeah. got sucked into other stuff. What are your credentials in Salesforce? Yeah. So yeah, so uh, so my actual credentials is a certified administrator. So I have the same certification that you guys will be getting at the end of this class, right? That's it. I don't have, I haven't gone and gotten 10, 15 certifications or anything like that. You can, if you like, I know many people who do. I have people who report to me who have five and six uh, certifications. You don't have to have a certification to get into Salesforce. It just helps when you don't have experience to be able to say, oh, by the way, I'm certified. So even Salesforce themselves say I can do this but I don't have, uh, I only have one certification. I am not a certification hog. I'm not, I, mean, I don't have a desire to go and get 20 and 30 certifications and things like that. I'm different in terms of, again, I'm not a technologist in the sense that I like to put my head down and code. I'm a people person. I am a leader. I like to go into an organization look at what they have going on from a technology standpoint, set a vision, make sure we're driving towards that vision, make sure people are working towards accomplishing those goals and we're moving on to, to accomplish those directions. But the point is, I'm not trying to climb to the highest point of the technical skills. And so that's my point. Whatever your bent is, right? You can be a technologist and Salesforce has development and all that kind of stuff that you can do if you want to do that. We will not be learning any development in this class. That's not what we teach. We teach Salesforce administration. How do we configure and administer the tool called Salesforce for companies? Okay, that's called an administrator. And that's that entry level point into the Salesforce ecosystem. Once you're in there, you can go whichever direction you like. But again, you do not have to get a million certifications to make a great living in Salesforce. Once you're in, you're in, and it's time to uh, time to go whichever direction you like. And I'll give you leader, I'll give you guidance on on how that looks. We do career pathing and all that kind of stuff during the class, and so um, it's a it's a great opportunity from that standpoint. And Sean, Sean, also when he starts the class, um, and uh, Sean is very, uh, I guess he's going to come from an angle of just uh, understanding how to think first, how you. I bet mean, you like what? How to think? Yeah, you, he's gonna probably break down the mentality of when you come into class. Oh, you know, he's gonna give you a lot of different little exercises, mind things, and things that make you think. It's okay. This is how I need to look at it. He always talks about the analogy of the child and how the you know the kid when they uh, infant when they learning how to walk, and so I'll let him do it. But I'm just saying that those are different things that really serve to. I guess because I'm, I'm gonna say this, man. African Americans specifically, not not that this isn't for just only for African Americans, it's not it's for anybody, but specifically for African Americans, a lot of times we don't get in these spaces because for one, you know, when you go to college, you can look at our degrees. We tend not to get the degrees that are gonna be dealing heavily with math. And unfortunately, a lot of colleges and universities have not caught on to the fact that you don't need a bunch of you don't need 30 different calculuses to be able to learn how to code you know those are actually it's not needed it was needed way back in the day when you were doing punch cards and stuff probably in the 50s and stuff but these colleges still do that i think that's a bit antiquated uh but i think that's what hurts a lot of us as african americans is we go to these colleges and universities we get, we don't go there we go into psychology sociology human just you i mean uh, criminal justice you know and what happens okay. is you get sent off in another field and then you see it and you're like, man, I wish I could, but I got a degree in psychology. I can't jump over into that field now because I just, I don't have the experience. I don't have, and that is what, that's why you need a more nurturing company, not just no, no knock against you to me, but and no knock against certain little boot camps and stuff, but going to a boot camp. It is something a lot of times in a week, they'll give you all the information in a week, right? You're not going to remember all that. You're not going to be able to go in a week. I've never seen anybody in all these years go to one of these boot camps. They they cram all the knowledge in your head in either a month or, or a week. And then the next thing you know, you, you really know. It takes time. 
consistency you ask questions usually it's a chat you can't you can't unmute your microphone and ask questions it's just a chat it's just some guy just running through okay this is this this is that this that's all he says and then that's it and it costs thousands of dollars for example my computer career.edu is $21,000 right I went through the whole track just to see what they were charging and that's what they're charging that's what I'm saying and you still they're getting they're getting thousands of people but you need a more nurturing environment, specifically if you're African American, because it's just you need to get it from the mind, to learn from the eyes and minds of a person that looks like you, that understands and thinks and understands how we culturally align up. Because when you go into corporate America, a lot of times it is a different culture. So you have to, you know, what I'm saying, so you have to have someone that understands that. So a lot of times I find myself mentoring my students. I had a student call me yesterday about a report he was building. And he was asking me some questions and I was just on the phone with him. He took my class about three, four years ago. His brother been working three, four years now. But he he had a question about some uh, uh, connection pooling, uh, you know. And I was like, oh, yeah, we was talking about a report and a, a, a shared data source and stuff like that. These are different things that you can get when you come to a situation where it's a more nurturing environment. They've already done studies on HBCUs. Cause I've done a few videos on this and on the HBCU, they talk about how they're not needed. Well, if you survey students that come from an HBCU versus students that come from a PWI, the students from the HBCU will say they were better uh, catered to. They felt like it was a more nurturing environment. They felt a certain way. Whereas the PWI students, a lot of times they tend to drop out more. This is just the actual raw data, I'm not trying to get into the Deion Sanders stuff. I'm just saying in general that, a lot of times African Americans do need and we do flourish under more nurturing environments. Like you know, and that's just in, in the HBCU is just an example if you look at the actual raw data. All right. Uh are you taking any questions, uh Sean? Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. I'm gonna put the link in the chat room. If you want to call in and ask a question, uh link is in the chat room, guys. If you want to call in and ask a question. Uh, link is in the chat room. In fact, what we'll do, we'll take a quick commercial break, um, you know, as people come into the chat room and then, you know, we'll take, a, a, you know, I guess 20 minutes to answer questions. Is that cool? Sure. That's cool. All right. All right so we'll be right back, you guys. All right. In honor of Black History Month, my books and ebook will be $2 off. Purchasing is available at www.saycarry.com. Dot com, And you can also use my website to contact me regarding questions, comments, or to book speaking engagements. Thank you. Bye-bye. And Learn the ins and outs of IT and launch your IT career in just a matter of weeks with the help of Lifting the Veil IT Academy. I took Lifting the Veil Academy with some. Took a while, but I'm here. I made it. I am now an SSRS developer. Um, I start on the 13th, making a rate of 48 an hour. Sign up for a free consultation and see where this industry could take you. To learn more, go to www.ltvacademy.com. That's www.ltvacademy.com. Alexis here coming to you with an awesome sale of 25% off when you use promo code OGURU25 at alexisfowler.com. I provide services like digital art, logo designs, packaging designs, web designs, social media flyers, and much more. If you're an entrepreneur with a business or a startup company, make sure you take advantage of this opportunity. Getting 25% off when you use promo code OHURU25 at AlexisFowler.com. At the Okoli Law Group, we specialize in producing justice. If you or a loved one in the Atlanta metro area is facing serious criminal charges, then you need serious legal representation. The Akoli Law Group is here for you. The Akoli Law Group is here for us. The Akoli Law Group. Serious legal representation. All right, guys, if you have any questions, uh, link is in the chat room. If you want to call in and add to the conversation, uh, you're more than welcome to come on and yeah. uh, ask 
ask a question. Again, link is in the chat room. Go ahead and click on a link and you could call in. I guess I'll, uh, while we're waiting, I guess I'll what? just kind of talk about uh, a few of my students' experiences as far as uh, once they've come through. Um, I've had a lot of students come through the academy that have been able to leverage their income. Because a lot of times, guys, if you you like, you know what, I don't want to get into this. I want to start my own business. I want to, I, I used to have a mobile car wash for a while. And even when I flipped houses full time, one of my problems was tax returns, check statement, check stubs, things like that. You couldn't, if you couldn't show consistent income in a sizable amount, a lot of times it made it harder to actually get into borrowing money. Whereas I noticed people that had, you know, jobs making north of 70, 80,000, they, they, they could walk in a bank you know, with a 600 credit score and borrow whatever, usually, right? You might get a different interest rate, but just, just you know, as a, as a rule of thumb, I also wanted to say that. You can leverage a, a income like Dave Ramsey always talks about. Your income is your greatest wealth building tool. Uh, if you're trying to move forward and do certain things, look, man, you need good tax returns. You need good check stubs. You know, could you get there working, making 40,000, 30,000? Yeah, you could. But in today's economy, man, when everybody you, you look around, people are struggling right now. Um, they're talking about gas is going to get back up, you know, near five, six dollars again this summer. So it's going to be a long summer. And, you know, that when gas is six to seven dollars, just think about what the prices of food and everything when you go to the store. So you we need to right now. I'm just being honest with you. You need to make over a 70, 80,000 now just to survive. So if you're not doing that, you know, you want to try to you might want to look at something that's only a three or four month investment. That would, you know, can pay large dividends. What, what you think, Sean? Oh, I mean, yeah, I agree with you fully. I mean, you know, there, there's, you know, I, as I'm on the internet, particularly YouTube and things like that, you hear that there's this sentiment around working a nine to five, and it's, it's seen as such, such a, a, a you know, a, a terrible thing. You know, you don't want to, I don't work a nine to five. I want my own and all that. And look, we all want our own thing for sure. But what, what we all do, what, what many of us do in, in tech is we leverage this tech dollars. We leverage that nine to five money. And, um, and typically people associate having a nine to five with not being free. And the, the world has changed that that's not, it's not a reality anymore. What happens is um, most people, not most people, but many people, and particularly in the world of Salesforce, um, work remotely. Um, and so you work remotely. You can work from anywhere you want in the world. I personally like nature. I like to go. I live right, right down the street from the river. I like to go work beside the river sometimes from time to time when the summer is good i take my kayak and when i'm done working i jump on the river and paddle away that's the kind of freedom i enjoy because i don't have to go into an office and, and things like that but even if i did have to go into an office and i had to invest to build my skill set like i had to do at some point in time well then that's fine too because i'm investing and i'm getting the type of income return that's going to allow me to, to to leverage it to do other things and and create other opportunities for myself and for my family. So I'm never a fan of this, this idea that, that, you know, if you're working for somebody else, you're losing and all that kind of stuff. It's, it is a very um, nearsighted perspective from my, from my perspective, but yeah, I, I have other businesses and, and things that I'm doing as well, but I, this as a stream of income is huge, right? So why turn off that stream and you can have it, you can have it as well. You can have it as well and have the liberty of working remotely and and all the things that I'm talking about in, in as, as little as 90 days. And um, and that's what we're here to support. Now let, let me explain some things, too, because I see someone mentioning the silver. So let me explain something. So the silver is the recordings from older classes. It, you won't have access to Sean. You won't have access to me. It is just videos. So I'm just letting people know that you really want if you want actual consultation you want resume prep you want access to the you know certain things in the facebook group 
study groups, all that different stuff, the real bells and whistles, then you want to sign up for the actual track itself. But if you want to listen to the video, that's just, that's what that is. So I'm just letting people know. So when you go to the website, and there's a web, there's actually a video I put up on the website now. If you go on the website, you'll see a video, and I, and I basically explain everything, how to sign up, how to, you know, and also you can set up a consultation for free. Uh, but if you don't, if you don't have time, scroll up in the comments. We put our phone number up at the beginning of this video. So if you want to just like, look, man, I, I, I want to call you tomorrow. I got some questions. 678-627-2796. That's it. Give me a call. I'll yep. talk. Or I can forward your number directly to Sean if you want to talk to him. If you, That's right. If you, yeah, you got some questions. Sean is, is, you know, wants to get in the trenches and answer some questions. So, uh, you know, he's he's definitely going to be a, a good asset. So you guys are really uh, going to be in for a treat if you give, give Sean a call. Yeah, so that's right. I see uh, I see a question that says, so as a Salesforce certified administrator, I can get an entry level job that is remote and work anywhere in the world after 90 days? Yes. D yes. That's no, like the young folks, that, that's no cap. Yes, <laughs> that's that's what it is. In fact, since COVID, more and more jobs have gone to the remote model because most businesses started realizing, why are we carrying all of this real estate? We're carrying all this real estate. Then COVID hit and none of us could work out of that real estate. So everybody's working from home and wait, we're able to still be productive. We're able to still make profits and not have the extra overhead of people going into um, into uh, uh, um, into an office every single day. Kill the real estate. My company, one of the companies that we're for, we killed the real estate deals in COVID. Once we realize, yeah, everybody can be productive. The company's still running. Why are we carrying this ridiculous overhead? So profits went up. So my point I'm making is that um, in this industry, many of the jobs are remote. Matter of fact, studies are showing that people are more productive working remotely than they are going into an office. And so companies are adopting that model hand over foot. And in order, because there's a war for talent, listen, if your skill set is flipping burgers, no knock on flipping burgers, you do whatever you got to do to make a living. But if your skill set is flipping burgers, no one is fighting over you. No one is 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 trying to out. No company is trying to outbid the other to to get you to come work for them. OK, that doesn't happen because the skill set, the value of that skill set is not high enough to, to do that. But when you are a Salesforce administrator or an architect, or a de developer, or a project manager, or anything with the sales force in front of it, companies will absolutely fight over you because there is a war for talent out here. That skill set is much more valuable. And so companies will outbid each other. I, was, I, I did an interview today. I was interviewing a Salesforce architect to come work on our team. And it, he had worked for Salesforce, the company itself, for 13 years as a consulting, as part of their consulting department, going into many other companies and, and dealing with their sales force. It makes a lot of money, all of that. But it, it was so clear and evident to me that this guy was good and how good he was that I immediately called our HR department after I interviewed him. And I told him, I said, there will be a war. There will be a price war, a bidding war for this guy. I don't want to overpay for him. Please try to lock him down as quickly as possible. In other words, offer him the job with the full package and the full salary and everything and all the incentives. Now, don't wait, because the longer you wait, the more companies get involved and then his price goes up, 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 up. You don't do that unless you have a skill set that doesn't happen for you unless you have a skill set that's valuable. And that's what we're offering you, an opportunity to get a valuable skill set to be able to leverage from this point on. Right. Not just not just for your first job. This is for many jobs or or for a career. Right. And so that's that's the whole point here. Hey, Sean, let me uh, someone is asking about being a Salesforce developer. They're saying, mm -hmm. is this well, how would this class actually go work in conjunction with being a developer? How would this like I'm a database developer. I do transact SQL and mostly. 
And, you know, that's pretty much all I do, really. <laughs> but that being said, how would you leverage a Salesforce administration class as an introduction to getting into being a developer? Like, I, you know, I spoke with somebody. She actually took my class and she worked because she took my SQL class. She's working in Salesforce, but she's doing well because she knows yeah. SQL as well. So I, I know Salesforce has SQL in it. But just explain that because I don't know. Even though I used to be certified, yeah. I, I'm really not the one to ask. Sure. About it. Yeah. So, so again, like I said, once you learn the the fundamental skill set of of Salesforce, right? What the CRM is, the customer relationship management system is, how it works, um, some of the rules that you need to know and learn, then the sky's the limit, right? And if you're a developer and you come in and you learn that fundamental how Salesforce works then the sky's the limit for you too. You can go on after after becoming, for, for you as a developer, you don't have to get your Salesforce administrator certification in order to get your Salesforce developer certification. You don't have to do that, but it's helpful, right? It's helpful. It's it's building on a platform. But what you would be learning in this class is the, the fundamental skill set of Salesforce, getting a, um, familiar with the, the, the whole Salesforce universe, to be able to solve problems through coding in Salesforce. Now that's just for someone who's a developer. Okay. So we don't, we don't teach, we won't be doing any coding in this class. That's not what this is about. That's not what the, the skill set of Salesforce administration is about. There is a separate skill set called Salesforce development where you employ um, the language of Apex right it's a, apex is the language that salesforce is written in and you would learn the apex language and learn how to write classes and things like that in apex that's a whole different whole different thing right writing apex triggers and classes and that's a developer that's for those who are you know code you know they're about coding and and they understand how to learn computer languages and how to use it, all that that's that's for them so that's how it kind of fits together. You get into, you learn how Salesforce works in general, and then you can also learn uh, how to do the coding and all that kind of stuff. Oh, which by the way, um, all of that, even the coding stuff is all on Trailhead as well. Now, let me say one other thing. You have, you have, um, you have Trailhead, right? That's their learning platform. And it's called Trailhead. It's it's they've they've called it that for a reason because they are trails. They're paths and trails and things like that. But if you any of you guys that go hiking or like the outdoors, you know that you really get a full experience on the trails when you have a guide. And that's the real thing. There there are a lot of uh, let's just say dead bodies on the on the trail uh, after having trying to do it by themselves. And um, and that's because you need a guide. You need someone who does this. You need someone who knows what they're talking about. To say, hey, go that direction. Don't go over there. You don't need to go over that direction. We're headed this way. And then we're going to go right. Right. So that's that's what we're doing in this course as well. We're guiding you through the paths, the trails to success in 90 days so that you have learned everything you need to know to, to be certified, to get two certifications at the end of 90 days. OK, you're being led by an industry leader myself. I'm leveraging my network and bringing folks in to talk to you keep you encouraged. Why keep you encouraged? Because I find from after training people for years now, it's never the, the actual subject matter that's hard. The stuff isn't complex. That's not what's hard. What's hard is setting up your life and your mind in such a way that is going to facilitate doing something different to, to reach your goals. That's the different. That's the difficult part. And for that, we need encouragement. We need someone to that that's going to get on a camera with you on Tuesdays and Thursdays and say, "Hey, it's time to rock and roll. We're doing this." You know, we need somebody to hold you accountable. We need you to to stay motivated. And that's how you get to your goal. You can't do it alone. Uh, very few people can do it alone. There's only so much motivational equity we all have. And Quite frankly, life is beating a lot of that out of many of us. And so you need to get it pumped back up or or leverage the rest of the little bit that you have to accomplish some of these big time goals. And this is one of them. And we do it in 30 days. Let me I'm say sorry, 90 days. Let me let me add one more thing too. Uh, what I've noticed is, and there's this thing called mastermind groups. I'm sure a lot of you people are aware of that 
they've done studies on this. Whenever you have a mastermind group, which is just a, a group of individuals set on a, sing a single goal, what happens is more of those people within that group tend to uh, obtain that goal than if they just did it on their own. Now, you, you may be smart, you may be brilliant, but I'm going to tell you something, man. It's always strength in numbers. You know, there's an African proverb, heavy. What it says, uh, many hands make a heavy load light. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but the point I'm trying to make is I've seen this firsthand. I've seen a group of just three brothers that were actual friends of each other that actually met in my program. They all worked together and they made a pact. We're going to make sure all of us get on. And that's what happened. They they just spoke it into existence. One guy got a job two, three weeks after finishing my course. The other guy got a job about, I'd say, about a month and a half later. And the other guy got a job started last month. All these are six-figure jobs. These guys, but these guys all came in and worked together and they held each other accountable. They would they would quiz each other. They would they still meet on Wednesday nights, even though they all work and they 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 share what they're learning with each other. So the mastermind group is a is really what we you know I think that principle of coming in and then you got a guy like Sean this guy's a genius so he's gonna be really there to kind of guide you through the different pitfalls that you'll face. I faced a lot of pitfalls. I fell on my face a hundred times, right, and doing a lot of different things and backed into stuff that I didn't even see I was backing into. That and and I can tell this to my students and that's the same with Sean. He can tell you, hey, don't do this. Because a lot of times that's what you get with mentorship. Like I said, you can go to Udemy. You can go to anywhere, plural site. You can watch videos. But how to put, how are you going to prepare your resume? Or if somebody asks you, okay, walk me through uh, an average day on your last project. Well, first of all, you don't even have anything on your resume to even get that far. You're not going to get that far, basically. Because you need to be able to put a resume together. And I'm not saying put something fake on your resume. I'm just saying in general that you need to be able to put a resume together that employee employers are going to people like Sean, when he was a recruiter, would have called you. I remember when I went through that $15,000 program, Sean probably don't remember this phone call. I said, man, they got a, a job placement department. And I showed him the bullet points of what was on my resume. He was impressed. He's like, man, this is good, man. I mean, this is this will help you really get in there. And but Sean knows how to develop those types of bullet points to put on your resume. He knows how to get you. And then you got trailhead. So you got so many different legs. And then you can put all this on. You can put this on your LinkedIn profile. And what will happen is people will start coming through LinkedIn, which, and it'll really become annoying. And I told my wife today, I said, look, when I get out of IT, I'm changing my number. Because these people, they call, they are relentless. They'll call you. I got a job. You say, okay, well, send me. If I'm interested, I'll call you back. They'll call back twice. If I don't answer, They'll call back the next day. I'm like, man, I, I, I said, if I'm interested, I didn't get a chance to read the email. You done called me four times and left messages. That's how now, much they're calling me for that. Who, who would like, and that's a good problem to have, right? And, and instead of applying for jobs, you got people calling you for jobs day in and day out. Hey, come work for us. Will you, will you please come work for us? What's your rate? You know, that's one of the first questions they ask. They say, hey, we got an available job right now. How much are you charging? That's a totally different conversation, right? Than applying for a job and trying to get, um, trying to get, uh, find out how much they're paying because they didn't put it on the job resume. This is the reverse. When you have a high level skill set, the jobs call you and ask you how much do you want. Okay, it's totally different. It reverses the polarity of everything we you've you've experienced from a from a job market standpoint. All right, sure. We got any other, uh, any more questions in the chat room, or if anybody wants to call in, we'll we'll stay on for about ten more minutes, and then we'll close. Yep. We'll close out. I was say, Sean, what's your what's your typical day? Um, like you know, Monday through Friday, as far as what your uh, what your jobs or your contract work, with, you know. Sure. Or, 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 so, but it's, oh, here we go. If someone was to get hired to be a sales force administrator, I know different companies you know have different schedules but what's a, a a typical day for like the average self salesforce administrator absolutely yeah so the the typical day uh you may come in 
So again, the Salesforce administrator is the person who's in charge of configuring and making sure Salesforce is working properly for the people within that organization. Okay. So they may come in. Um, I say come in. They may wake up, open up their laptop. They may check their emails. There may be a couple requests. Hey, a couple questions, right? Can, can you change this thing in Salesforce? How does this particular feature work, right? So they may be asking you questions. Most companies will have some sort of ticketing system, right? When you're a Salesforce administrator, a ticketing system is where you guys that work at companies already know, right? If there's a, a, a problem, they will submit a ticket. Hey, I'm having this problem. Can you investigate it or fix it for me? You, those tickets come to you and you will knock them out one by one. And so you may have a few tickets to respond to in the morning. Um, you know, you may have a meeting or two throughout the day in terms of uh, getting together to learn about what your customers, your the, your colleagues would like from a Salesforce perspective um, to be able to to do in the tool. And you're on those calls and you're able to hear what they're requesting and you're leveraging what you've learned to be able to figure out if what they're requesting is possible. And if it is possible, how to actually do it in Salesforce. You don't have to come up with the solutions right there on the spot, but this they'll 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 lean on you for that. Uh, and then it's it's meeting people's needs, right? And so at the end of the day, you're probably following up on a couple other tickets, calling a few people to make sure that the solution you gave them or that the fix works properly, that sort of thing. Th this is what I'll also say about these kinds of jobs, and it's different for everybody. It, it, when you ask what's my day like, my day, I don't even touch Salesforce anymore. Um, it's, it's, I'm on meetings all day, all day long, it's just meetings, right? And so um, I shouldn't say all day, but as I have them scheduled. The, um, th the thing about this, everybody is not a, a objects person, right? Some people like working with things and stuff and right, that engineering problem solving mind. Other people are more relational, they like working with people. This is another reason why I love teaching Salesforce is because my people who are more relational, the ones that went into you know, sociology and psychology and all that kind of stuff. And now they're trying to get into tech. Those itches can be scratched in Salesforce as well, because again, you're not behind a computer screen just doing this all day long, right? You're actually having conversations, charting out, working with people in a collaborative way with a team to solve problems, to figure things out. And that stuff is fun for people who are relationship oriented. And for my people who just who do just want to nerd out behind the screen and not be seen and and just code, you can go development route and and you know there are different ways to do that. Um, another thing that might come up in a day in the life of an admin is somebody may ask you to develop a report or a dashboard, right? That allows them to see some data at an aggregate level or to be able to see some data in a visual way. We teach all of that in the class, and that's one of my favorite things to teach. Um, so again, your skill set will allow you to become uh, relied upon within all of these companies in a way that's that's very very important, and uh, and that's that's kind of um, you know a little bit of kind of how a day would be. All right, all right. Uh, what we'll do? We'll go ahead and close out. Sub, anything else you'd like to share in closing? No, man. Sean, Sean knocked it out the park. I, I, honestly, um, if I were in somebody's shoes, let me put it like this. I wish I had somebody like that. When I was coming up, Sean saw it. I went through hell, man. And if I had somebody that I could reach out to that had years of experience that knew how to tell me what to do to prove myself, to have proof of work and with my drive and motivation and what I, what I was studying all day, every day, because I was broke with, and struggling to pay a $35 a month phone bill, that just goes to show you, man, you you really can benefit from having a mentor. So uh, that's what that expensive program did for me. But you don't have to do that. Fortunately, you can pay just two ninety seven a month, monthly subscription. Um, and that's it. And, you know, I won't be doing any more classes probably for a while. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll probably that'll be later. So at this class here, Sean, he he gives a lot in the class. So he's probably going to want to charge his batteries at least a couple, you know, six weeks, a month, couple of months. So we're looking at probably July before we even think about, I call, hey, man, you want to jump back in there, you know. So 
it'll probably be July if we're going to do it again, uh, which is when we started last year. So, um, and that's about it. That's all I got. God bless y'all. I thank y'all for, thank you for having me on the channel. Yep. Just, just one more time. We're starting on Monday, Monday, 9 p.m. Uh, go ahead over to the site, ltvacademy.com. Sign up. It's two ninety seven a month for three months. Okay. So 90 days, three months. We're accomplishing our goals together. We do it together. Don't wait. Don't delay. Go sign up. I would love to see you on Monday. Let's accomplish these goals together. And I appreciate the time. Dinus, really appreciate the time. Oh, no problem, uh, brother. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Hey, everyone, thank you so much for joining. Like, share, subscribe. Until next time, family. Dinus Amir, search for Huru. Peace. All right.